Okay, we're at, at the start of the time. Can everybody hear me in the back? Can you all hear me in the back? Yeah. Okay, okay. cool. Just want to make sure well, there's no mic in here. Um, <clears throat> in 1577, on a cool autumn evening, Katharina took her six-year-old son to the top of a hill to see a marvel in the night sky. A streak of light was hanging among the stars. It was a comet visible to all of Europe. The Comet of 1577. The boy was Johannes Kepler. Now we all know Kepler would go on to make huge discoveries in science, astronomy, and even um, telescopes. The images you see here are from the Orion Nebula from the James Webb uh, Space Telescope um, this year. In 1608, Kepler would write what is thought to be one of the first science fiction novels called Somnium, or The Dream. The book described a dream where travelers would journey to the moon and gaze at the beauty of the planets from the lunar surface, where ships and sails would be fashioned to adapt to the heavenly winds, full of explorers who would not fear leaving the limits of the atmosphere. Welcome to Gazing at the Stars, how to take USWDS beyond the limits. I'm Ray, if we haven't met, um, lead software engineer at Pixel. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague and friend here, James Mejia. Hello, everyone. Uh, Pixel is a mission-driven organization determined to improve people's lives through human-centered strategies and transformative technologies. Uh, when James and I were discussing this topic, um, he shared with me a story of an agency that had approached the USWDS team and asked them this question, um, am I using USWDS? <laughs> <laughs> because they just weren't sure. They had you know, a component on the page that looked like USWDS, but they had no idea. Um, and so we looked into it a little bit further and saw, yes, they had the component for the government banner, they had the component for the uh, contact identifier, um, but nothing else looked like USWDS on the site. Um, right. When we, when we looked at the code, uh, there was really no trace of any design system code aside from the components that you mentioned. Yeah. So, I, and I have experience using USWS on several projects um, really since uh, version 2 came out and been implementing it in various different ways, some good, some bad. Um, but when I, um, I want to say that how do I know, how does anyone know if they're actually using USWDS on their website? And so, first we're gonna kind of approach this question. Are we using USWDS? What is USWDS really? How am I, am, am I, am I using it? How should I be using it? And um, when, first, when USWDS was first introduced to me, I started asking a lot of these questions. Um, is it a set of standards, like WCAG for interface development? Right, did we ask them? If, if they know they're using USWS first. Yeah, go ahead. So can you raise your hand if you, if you know you're using USWS? Wow, that's amazing. Um, how about you have an idea, but you're not sure if your project uses USWS? No? OK. And then if you're not using USWS at all, but you want to use USWS? OK, cool. Thank you. So I was asking these questions. Is it a set of standards like WCAG? Is it a framework like Bootstrap for utility classes and components and for scaffolding? Is it a boilerplate that I can just copy and paste and then just modify everything? Um, is it a theme like Bartik, you know, where I can just customize a few theme settings and be done? Um, is it a prototyping tool to create low-code prototyping? Um, is it an accessibility plugin where automatically everything that I have on my site now is accessible because I'm just using it. Um, because what it is determines on how we would approach using it and also what, it's, what limits it might have on us. Um, so James works on the USWDS team and maybe he Spoiler. can kind of, 
<laughs> maybe he can kind of uh, give us a clear picture on what USWDS is and maybe some of the methodologies that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, to give my personal opinion, opinion, it's a bit complicated, right? Because I kind of saw those bullet points and I want to say it's all of those things. Maybe not the accessibility plugin, but um, USWS, like it says there, is a toolkit of principles, guidance, and code. So to use USWS, you don't need to adopt, you, you don't need to feel forced to download the USWS package and start like trying to jam it into your current code or website. It would be great if you wanted to dive into USWS and wanted to do that, totally. Um, and we're there to support you if you, if you need that. But um, you can also take a more <laughs> responsible, measured, incremental approach to adopting USWS. And you can start with the principles. And then you can start following the guidance that USWS offers. And there, there's guidance and principles associated with accessibility. Like, what does it mean to be accessible? I ran a plugin and I got no errors. That must be accessible, right? Uh, no, it's not. That, that doesn't mean that. Um, but the design system wants to help you get, like, raise the bar for accessibility and experience. So you don't have to feel forced to just start implementing USWS, like leave this, this session after and just like open up GitHub and start, start coding. No, you can start with the principles and then the guidance. Um, and USWS does offer a way for you to do that with the many palettes of fonts and colors and ways you can start integrating components that are core to the design system like the identifier or the, the gov banner, which tells you that you're on an official government site. So it's OK to take it slow. It's, it's normal. Yeah, so I think that there's a lot of um, steps that you could take in order to kind of improve your current experience and while trying to work toward potentially integrating some of the core components and the, the functionality and the code of USWDS. Mm -hmm. So what are the limits of USWDS? I mean, if you're thinking about your next project or application, um, maybe you want to understand how what the limits are because you want to go beyond that. Um, do we have any designers in the room? Awesome. Any designers with experience with USWDS? Can you guys tell me some of your experience of maybe things that are limiting from the, using the USWDS, or that you think of are as like restrictions put on you? Um, it's hard with the, uh, I think the code package to kind of work with other open source frameworks like Rails. Um, so building it and making it come together was, it was a bit of a okay. feat, but it's kind of now since we're moving out to Drupal. So integrating it into your tech stack is a little bit difficult. Right? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts they want to share? I'm not going to take it personal. So <laughs> <laughs> speak up. I'm not the only one responsible. Um, what about developers? I guess most of you are developers, or maybe some of you are developers with experience with USWDS. Can any of you share uh, maybe some ways that you feel like it's kind of restrictive for what you're doing or anything like that? Yes. So It was not easy to make you compatible to the component that you started using. So new components? Yes, new components. New components were challenging to implement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I sometimes get errors that are. I'm not sure whether it's our our website and how we're using it, or if it's USWDS doesn't have something. Um, the, the the Drupal theme doesn't have something for us. Like when I use charts. Mm -hmm. or a couple other like, things that, that our website is using. So, so it sounds like there's some kind of integration errors that are happening between Drupal and maybe USWDS, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? 
I find restrictive when an agency wants to use a very specific font or they want to use a very specific color. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to use like the color code, then that's the previous font. Oh, yeah, that's Those are yeah. probably the two biggest problem. challenges for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else like to share? All right, um, so we did kind of pull some of the designers and developers who we work with and um, have experience. USWDS also has experience working with, and we wanted just to go over just some of the feedback that we got. You know, from a designer's perspective, colors, colors and fonts are too generic. They don't fit my agency's brand. Um, the theme settings are too strict. Um, the system's not flexible to scale, like we talked about, new components. Um, where custom components are not supported. My site looks like every other Gev site, which is a big problem. Um, I don't know if I'm permitted to customize these things or even be creative. Um, and designers even have said, well, I really look to the developers to tell me what I can do. Um, and on the flip side, so let's look at kind of what developers feedback we have. It's difficult to set up, not compatible with my tech stack, right? <clears throat> Too much to load. Inability to support new components, which we already kind of talked about. Confusion on what I can modify or extend in the system. Concerned about the long-term support of it. Or maybe I'm interested in integrating more modern, uh, modern CSS, modern JavaScript, and I'm not sure that I can do that with using the USWDS. So, I mean, developers overall feel like adopting this just kind of makes more work for them and just less control, I think. Um, and there's a number of users who are hesitant to use USWDS um, that, uh, to use it to its full potential because they just don't know how far they can push it and still say, I'm using USWDS. Um, agencies are afraid they'll lose their brand. Um, designers are afraid that they won't be able to be as creative. Developers are afraid that, um, that customizations aren't using USWDS anymore. They're just like completely custom and separate from it. So we're here to kind of break that illusion uh, and provide you with examples, give some permission for you to go beyond USWDS on your next project. Um, so let's dive into some live examples now. I'm just gonna show you a few. I wish we had more time to kind of prepare for additional samples because James shared with me a whole spreadsheet full of sites that are using USWDS and we didn't have time to go through all of them to find, but we did have a handful that we'd like to show with you and certain aspects of it that we'd like to call out and uh, present to you today. Um, also, I, if you have any projects that you, maybe you're working on or projects that you can think of that are taking USWDS beyond, please come talk to me or come talk to James after and share with us because we'd like to hear that kind of stuff. So we've selected a few sites. Um, here are some examples of designs going above and beyond. And I'll kind of point out in each of the designs what is this, um, what I want to call out here. So this is vote.gov website, very simple site. Um, but I would like to highlight one thing, unique function. Um, it really has to do with the placement of the select languages. On vote.gov, there are 15 plus languages. So there's a lot of languages. Um, and we needed to have that in a prominent location up at the top. And we wanted to position it in a place that is kind of unconventional um, inside of the government banner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so as you know, the government banner is a little bit slimmer than this variant, yep. and uh, the guidance has no mention of adding any additional components to it, but uh, hopefully with these examples that we'll show, you'll see that USWS isn't here to restrict your creativity or the things that you want to do. I think as long as you follow the principles of meeting the UI needs of your user, like thinking about the user problems when you're designing your UI, not just because you want to do it, and thinking about accessibility especially, and the mobile principles. Make sure that it works uh, and it's mobile friendly. So as long as you have those three principles in mind and you can back up your design decisions, USWDS gives you the tools to do that and to do it easily. So additionally, I want to call out also that if you've seen the language selector, which is a somewhat new component, um, it's a single column. Our site has uh, a lot of languages, which meant that a lot of those languages would be below the uh, window. So we opted to do a two-column layout instead. So we've modified a core component, 
um, changed the way that it looked in order to fit our use case um, and kind of, I don't know, you can start breaking the rules, but I mean, we, <laughs> we've done something different than what the USWDS said out of the box. But this is, this is pushing the limitations of a component. If you look at the design guidance for the language selector, you'll see that it covers, it tries to be comprehensive in the few cases that we know have tried and true research behind it. But honestly, <clears throat> vote.gov is probably one of the first sites that had this challenge of, we actually have this many languages to support and you don't have a use case. So we don't, in that case, we don't want to restrict um, addressing this problem for the users because I feel like it's more important to fix the problem for users than to you know, be arbitrary and be like, oh, it's not USWS officially. So, And I'm hopeful maybe in the future we can contribute some of this back into the design system and help other teams support more languages like this. So this is just a simple example, um, and we'll move on to more, but I just wanted to call that out. So our next example, here is the ATNF website. Um, as you can see, they're using USWDS, um, and their header and their hero have been customized kind of uniquely for their use case. Um, it has different layout, um, font sizes, graphics. Um, doesn't necessarily look like the standard USWDS hero out of the box. Um, and I don't think it uses any of the hero component code from USWS. Right. Well, it does use some grid, but I mean, you know, the official components. And that's, that's okay. Yeah. Here's just another page from the site that is just looking a little bit different. Um, here's the food safety and inspection service site. You can see they're utilizing kind of unique branding colors um, to make them stand out. They also include some graphics and background artifacts, which you'll see here. So they make it just a little bit different and more creative. Um, so they're induce, introducing custom icons, animations, background images, um, to kind of create something that's unique. Like and unique. also colors that aren't red, white, and blue, as much as we love those colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they have like a custom interaction or the hover display and things like that. Something that is just taking something and pushing it a little bit farther to make it kind of more interesting and interactive. Um, so this is the US, General, US Surgeon General website and it, this one uses some creative fonts. Um, it used a unique, unique color palette um, and also space, I think, which is important when you're talking about design to help customize the US uh, USWDS for their agency. A little tidbit about that one, that's a status site. Awesome. Not a Drupal site. Yep. Again, using uh, graphic elements, custom card displays, and even animations. I think it's also a good example of using the design tokens that the system offers to extend it, customize it to, uh, I don't know, how, how your designer likes it. Mm -hmm. And finally, I wanted to share another project, or FTC. Um, this is an example of using USWDS, but kind of pushing the limits in several different ways. So if you look close, you'll probably see some core components that are kind of familiar, but they definitely look customized to it. Um, so here's like a card, a custom card display um, that they have for their website. But I wanted to kind of touch on the mega menu because I think the out of the box USWDS mega menu is kind of limited just to links. In our case, we used um, several different core components and also custom components to kind of make up this mega menu to include additional information for the end user to understand what was in that section and provide other avenues for um, CTAs and whatnot. Right, and like I said before, USWS tries to offer some solid foundations to start with, and if we can offer more, that's, that's great. We try to do that, but we're not aware or don't have the time or the ability to, like, to research a lot of these types of sites that have these very, very specific problems. Um, so, again, we're happy that, I'm happy to see that it's being extended and customized. So these are just a few examples, and I'm really excited to see what you will do on your next project as far as pushing the limits of USWDS. Um, so we're going to dive into just some, a few code examples, 
James, yeah. if you want to just take over. Uh, Do you want me to? Yes, please. Go into that one. Sure. So here is a very simple navigation. Um, if you check out our training tomorrow on USWS, you'll see it again. That's that's the plug. That's the plug for tomorrow's training. <laughs> tomorrow afternoon after lunch, check it out. But uh, back to this component. So this is a very simple component, and it does not use any USWS markup, as you can see, or maybe not see, in the very small bottom left markup uh, window. Um, but it does use USWS tokens, and design tokens are incredibly powerful and allow you to be super expressive in, in your UI. Yeah, sure. So here we see uh, the markup, and you can see some USWS utility classes, uh, and this is what I use to prototype some of the design for the workshop. At the very bottom, you'll see this, this uh, component, dgc-nav, which is, I used it for Drupal GovCon nav, and it doesn't look like it has any USWS utilities. So like it, at first glance, if you inspected this, you probably think this is just a custom, completely custom component. Um, but if we look at the styles for it. Well, I think also on this one, we'd also want to call out that we're using the methodology for like the naming classes of, you know, Ben. Best yeah, that's and principles, right? So that's very it's true. It's following the similar principles that you would see in USWDS where we have um, the block element modifier. Exactly. Uh huh. So if I were to create a more complicated component and I followed these BEM principles, it would be pretty straightforward to contribute it back to the design system. <coughs> and here we're looking at the styles for this little custom component. And you can see we're importing USWS core at the top, which brings, which gives us the utilities and the design tokens I was talking about. And you can see that I'm using the font utilities uh, as well as the design tokens to set the background, to set the spacing. Now, you might be thinking, I know CSS. That's not a big deal. Put the margin on top or bottom. But when you use the design tokens, you're speaking the language of the design system. And that makes it easier to have a more cohesive UI. And again, for purely selfish reasons, to contribute it back to the design system. <laughs> but it gives you a lot of utility to quickly spin up custom components. You can see there are even um, mix-ins for breakpoints. So you don't have to worry about how to set up these breakpoints in SAS or in whatever uh, styling you want to use. USWS offers that. Go to the next sample. Uh, sure. So that was a little uh, example. And this one is taking a little bit further. This is, uh, takes inspiration from the language selector that Ray had showed us. And it takes it a little bit further by adding some filtering to the drop-down menu. Now this would be useful in cases where you have more than a dozen languages or whatever, more than here. And I thought, it would be cool uh, if I could be able to filter a lot of these languages to help users more easily find what they're looking for instead of scanning a large list of uh, languages. So I added filtering to it, following the design principles of USWS. So my, my input is using the USA input class. It's following the guidance for forms by having a label and making sure that that label is connected. Uh, but I do have to say, uh, this is just a prototype. So if I really wanted to uh, contribute this back or even get it ready for production, you still have to do extensive like, user testing and accessibility testing because 
like I said before, it's not enough if you just quickly scan it and, and no errors come up. That doesn't mean you're offering a good experience. It just means the thing didn't catch it, right? You still have to test these things in real environments with real people, with real tools like assistive te technologies. But it's just to show you the, the power of combining the design tokens, the utilities, extending an existing component to create and improve this experience for users. So you can see at the top, this is, this is language selector, but I kind of mesh together language selector with accordion. Now, is that the correct thing to do? Uh, I don't know, but I did it. <laughs> now, the most important thing then would be to get this to users and testing it, right? So there, we can keep refining this and refining this to clean it up, but like I said, the most important part is testing, making sure that you're testing it in voiceover and other screen readers. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I think this kind of aligns with kind of our use case on vote.gov where we, you know, put it in the wild and in a certain use case, we saw that we needed to customize it in order to make it usable for our end users. <laughs> Um, we've, ho we've hoped that you've seen something that may be uh, stirring up some creativity in you, uh, maybe thinking about pushing the limits, uh, maybe on your next project, your next component. Um, we need more projects highlighting the potentials of using USWDS. Um, and we want to give you permission to go beyond on your next uh, project. But that isn't the full picture because we all have responsibility. And like James was saying, we need to kind of balance out empowerment with responsibility. Um, the choices we make and the solutions we implement affect so many lives. And at Bixel, we're always looking to engage our core values to improve people's lives through technology. Um, that's why we need to kind of balance this uh, empowerment and responsibility. We need to make sure that we're making decisions that improve people's experiences. We need to be diligent about testing along the way so that it's accessible and that everybody can use it. And we also need to do user testing to make sure that it's actually functional and not just looks nice. Um, yeah. And then when we have a breakthrough, when something is innovative, we need to find a ways to contribute back to the USWDS. Um, to keep improving the system yeah. and supporting it. So a few final thoughts. Designers, USWDS is a highly customizable, uh, customizable system that can meet the needs of your agency's unique style. You don't have to lose your agency's brand on your next project. Developers, it has a, built, a, set, a set of built-in functionalities and built-in <coughs> Um, functions that will help you to use on your next com custom component. And then stargazers, just continue to dream and go beyond the limits of USWDS. Um, and in Kepler's novel, he wrote this, when ships to sail the void between the stars have been built, there will step forth <coughs> explorers to sail these ships. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. Where are the translations coming from uh, for the language selector on Vote.gov? They are coming from a translator, a human translator. Awesome. So did you have a translator for each one of the languages? Yes. For every single piece of content? Two translators for each. One as an actual translator and one as a reviewer. How did you find them? Well, <laughs> um, we, we work with a person over on GSA uh, named Laura Godfrey, and she has a, or she, I think is maybe 
a main person in the multilingual community of practice in GSA. Um, and so they do work with NLSC. Um, so that's where we got most of our translations, but we've also started doing work with some other agencies as well. So, but that's for the bulk of the work. Digital.gov has a, a few communities, and that's one of the communities. So check it out. Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to relate to you at USFDS, but um, for vote.gov, they have a huge storage, I would assume, correct? Because. No. Oh, they don't. <laughs> I was only saying because I think. You're, are you thinking because we're, we're storing people's voting information? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because I think the more languages you add, yes. it has like a. This yeah. high, like you have 10 languages for one page, I mean, you're actually storing like 10 versions of it. Exactly. Yeah. And you have Exponentially like, growing content. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why I was curious because you have like at least 10. So I was like, mm -hmm. you guys I, just have a lot of storage. There's, there's 15 and there will be 20 next year. Wow. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Has any public perception been done on that banner? That, uh, sorry, the gov banner? Yeah. Uh, I've been resisting it personally for our site. Yes. But... How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's been feedback for sure on the banner, um, but recently someone had asked if, you, if you're from like a state government and you use it. USWS is primarily focused on empowering federal government sites, but that doesn't mean others can't use it. USWS is very flexible, not only in how you implement it, but uh, the ways how you can use it or who can use it. Uh, I don't think USWS as a product wants to get into being restrictive or being uh, telling people like to do certain things. Yeah, I think I as long as you follow the design principles, but the banner especially and the identifier are core components of the design system. So uh, those are probably the most delicate ones mm -hmm. and you would prob I would recommend that you stick to, to those. I think my question was more like, does the public find more trust on sites mm. that have that versus, mm -hmm. like do they recognize the .gov URL instinctually? and automatically trusted versus having that banner on there. Oh. That kind of public perception. Gotcha. Yeah. Use yeah. <laughs> I think it's definitely a perception in the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think from a federal perspective that, yeah. you know, I know with HHS, ever since we got the public facing science over the USWDS, that there seems to be a lot more um, trust in the information on the sites, um, and we're basing that off of our Qualtrics data and our analytics data. So obviously there's still a lot of areas um, that uh, need to be improved upon. But as the guy stated earlier, the USWDS is, um, you know, something that can be used across the world. The Surgeon General's office with their priority site is a subset of HHS. And it's a static site. So, you know, them to be able to implement the components in the, in the fashion that they have to meet the SG's requirements is just pretty much good. Yep. Very good point. Thank you. Do you have a question? Now, does I want to just say if you want to see which website in way beyond that, you can check this Marshall. U.S. Marshall? Yes. Okay. Because we implemented about 10 more components of that, and awesome. we never, you know, extended the mega menu, <coughs> just adding a field to the menu item, and the email shows up there, so cool. it's way beyond. That's that. great. Yeah, okay, thank we you. We implemented this slide there, way beyond the color components, way beyond and all of the components. <coughs> <coughs> That's and great. Marshall service has completely different, you know, it's compatible. Thank you. And I was just talking with James too, and I was saying that we need more ability to showcase some of the projects that are using yeah, USWS. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's great. 
They're doing a similar thing on vote.gov too. So that's awesome. That's another thing. See, that's something we can do with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> a lot of projects can need that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Imagine how many other sites you could that could benefit from the work that you're doing. That'd be amazing. Yeah. So thank you all for coming today. Um, hope to see some of you maybe in the train tomorrow. If not, then uh, it was nice to meet you. Yeah.